other neuro concerns senior citizens a little about team work and yes. equipment is always very expensive uh, yes. you know whether it's dental equipment or anything else so is this is 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 uh, you know the the kind of infrastructure you need for epilepsy even more expensive than the regular ones yes basically it is uh, it requires uh, it is like what uh, epilepsy care unit we have it is like 24 hour uh, continuous uh, run uh, run and it requires dedicated team and not only one specialty doctor like i am a epileptologist then we require dedicated epilepsy surgeon epilepsy nurse then we require technicians then we require neuropsychologists psychiatrists so all this work together in a single patient right if i am seeing a single epilepsy patient i will evaluate and i will prescribe medicine so it is like a, my patient but once he, if i want to do is a complete evaluation then all team members come into the play that's why very few units are there because every hospital there is a, uh, one person is available other person is not available so that's why i said it is a team work so i'm going to be i'm, I'm sure there'll be a question like this asked but so where are the facilities in india uh, available you know where are, where are they available yes so if you ask me like dedicated epilepsy care centers like western maharashtra we are the only one if we go to the mumbai mumbai we have it at the km hospital and uh, um, pokhara ben hospital uh, dedicated one then if you go to the delhi it is ams delhi and then there is a medanta medi city and now faridabad new hospital uh, uh, has come ams kochi uh, has brought that amruta so that is there and then in uh, trivandrum sri chitra uh, is there and then uh, in kochi there is amruta institute so these are the big hospitals which are dedicated set up like which we have not uh, we have like a 10 bedded setup similarly which is there in the uh, amruta kochi then sri chitra trivandrum and ams otherwise everywhere there is one or two bed because uh, it is a time consuming and equipment oriented and continuous monitoring is required and nothing in eastern india you know and and you as you said in 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 western india also there is just what you you have in pune as 10 beds yes. in yes. kokila ben 2 uh, yes. in uh, km 1 or 2 yes. so which yes. means this that's 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 a very sorry state of affairs yes yes because this is uh, really because now um, where where i have trained at sri chitra from there people like me are coming out and they are starting the centers so when i started we started our practice there were hardly six or seven centers now if you, we take like one or two beds then in gujarat there are four or five centers only not like uh, we have 10 bed like that but they are doing work so there are four or five centers then uh, if we go to the rajasthan i don't think there is a dedicated vdg unit in rajasthan not in mp not in uh, uh, bihar uh, in again if you go to the uttar pradesh there uh, i don't know uh, no uh, no there is a, not a facility like this if we go to the delhi government institutes like ams it has then few private hospitals when you go to the punjab only uh, pgi chandigarh also uh, have but it is not much uh, there are enough of other work so this this is not dedicated like this is there though there is a pgi chandigarh it is there then uh, ludhiana there is one center so there are very sparse centers in bangalore we have at nimans then few other uh, private hospitals three or four uh, they have then uh, if you go down in the tamil nadu in the chennai there are two centers so i can just count down the number of the centers so tell me something the you know in in terms of statistics uh, has the has the number of epilepsy uh, patients and people suffering from epilepsy has that has that been uh, has that been declining or is it the same or has it increased what is the what are the stats like i'm sorry we we you know as it happened it was world epilepsy day on yes. uh, the 17th yes. and which is why we thought it would be good to have uh, have you over and to talk about this and this is something which doesn't just affect uh, people at at a young age but it also affects people at an older age and which is why we thought it would be interesting so um, uh, so one question before we go to your presentation in has the numbers has the numbers increased have the numbers increased Uh, the numbers are usually what we say one in 100 uh, one person in 100 per, uh, people will have epilepsy 
though as the uh, the lifespan is increasing people uh, in the uh, elder age group are increasing and they are going to have seizures so we can't say the number is increasing exponentially but it is going to increase as compared to the previous because the lifespan previous was around 65 years now it is we are passing 70 years so as the age is going uh, to go up age span life span we are going to see the more number of patients epilepsy in elderly and similarly we see high number of patients in the uh, younger population also as the uh, our uh, perinatal like uh, pregnancy care and newborn care is improving that number is going a little bit down but this number is going to go up all right doctor so let me just uh, uh, request you to make uh, a presentation on the subject uh, which i which i just mentioned which is uh, you know he will be speaking on epilepsy seizures and other related neuro concerns in uh, senior citizens those of you who have questions as always please put them in the q and a tab and uh, we will then uh, uh, address it to dr jagta uh, you can mention your age you can mention your gender i do know that there are some uh, social stigmas etc that are there with the epilepsy so if you do not want to reveal your name uh, you know you can just uh, ask the question anonymously and uh, we will not even know who you are even the admin will not know who you are so uh, so don't worry about it over to you dr jagtap you can share your screen yes. uh, thank you uh, uh, i will first thank that uh, senior citizens today that they have given me this opportunity and as we are discussing that is the this is the epilepsy awareness week what we celebrate as and two days back only we celebrated it and then i'm going to present uh, this uh, epilepsy in elderly or in senior citizens uh, so what is the present state of affairs uh, in uh, india today about the epilepsy as i was saying that we are having one in 100 person is having the seizures and this video is courtesy of one of the my colleagues who has forwarded me so if you look at this tell me what is happening so what was happening here this gentleman had something different in the house and he is having this for uh, last one year once or twice a month sometimes usually on the what we say amavasya so his wife thought that this is his possessed by the ghost and he is not other than any other city in the interior of the india he is from the mumbai so what happened this is the uh, epilepsy is thought that it is not uh, uh, true epilepsy and there is something as possessed this is the misconception that is the why i am showing this you this video to say uh, that this is the uh, to increase the awareness so if you go what is elderly and what are the problems with the elderly so elderly the problems are that average life span is going to go on in, uh, increase and quality of life has improved so defining elderly or senior citizen by age is arbitrary now which was few years back that is again going to move forward so and the elderly or senior citizen does not reflect the complexity of the age health status and the quality of life so what we consider whether that person health, health of that person is having any other comorbidities because as we know by 40 or 50 years of age you are going to start have some hypertension some diabetes or some or other the uh, illnesses so we classify elderly or senior citizens to three groups one is young old that is 65 to 74 then <coughs> middle old 75 to 84 and then the oldest old that is 85 above then we sub classify them into healthy with medical problems and the frail people and why we are discussing epilepsy in this senior citizen group because as i was discussing previously if you look at this graph the number of the cases are higher during the first few years of life especially in the newborn period then they go down stabilize <coughs> sorry and as the age increases 
if you look here this graph goes up so that's why we are concerned about the epilepsy or seizures in elderly and by 2025 if you look 30% of the population in the developing world is going to be a about age of 60 years so if you look here it is going to be about age of the 60 years <coughs> that's why uh, knowing about epilepsy in elderly is important so what is epilepsy and what is difference between a fits seizure and epilepsy so epilepsy uh, fits or seizure or convulsion mirgi akdi all are the same things which synonyms are indicate the same thing so what happens there is abnormal excessive discharge in your brain and suddenly that person give an abnormal activity that what we call as a fit or a convulsion when somebody have two or more seizures 24 hours apart without any provoking illness like without any head injury so his, uh, sodium is normal his blood sugar is normal then we call it as epilepsy or he does not have any infection so somebody is having two or more seizures then we call it as a unprovoked seizures 24 hours apart then we call it as epilepsy when somebody has only one part of the body is involved like one hand one leg or he looks to one side then we call it as a focal when to start with when both hands or legs are involved it does like this or there is both eyes goes up then we call it as a generalized seizure and when we don't know from where it is starting whether it started one side or in both sides together then we call it as a unknown seizure type so as per the, our brain which part of the brain is involved the person behaves like that so this is the motor cortex from where our hands leg and face area is there so if somebody has involvement of this part then they will have face goes to one side his hand shakes or his leg shakes when somebody is involves the this blue color part then what happens he will develop some paresthesia or some tingling numbness so what we call it is a parietal lobe seizure somebody who start the seizure in this area it is really called as a temporal lobe they have some auditory aura they have some hear something the ringing in the ear or they have fear or they feel <clears throat> they see some uh, previous old uh, images or other thing when it starts in the occipital lobe from where our we are able to see <coughs> then uh, they will have some blackening in front of the eyes so depending on which part of the brain is involved will manifest with the seizure so what are the causes of seizures either because of brain injury like there may be brain tumor there may be the stroke there may be the head trauma or there may be the injury during the uh, delivery that may cause your brain injury which can lead to seizure sometimes infection of the brain what we call as meningitis can lead to the seizure sometimes some antibiotics also can cause seizure and sometimes your liver failure kidney failure or electrolyte abnormalities like increase in the sodium or decrease in the sodium also can cause uh, electrolyte disturbances and seizures so how this differ from the younger population usually young people have some chewing like movements some uh, postictal confusion which is very less but elderly there is not suddenly manifest with the motor features then there is a prolonged postictal confusion and in elderly generalized seizures are less common so it is very difficult to understand what it is so and in addition to that whether it is a true seizure or a seizure mimic like that it is though it looks like seizure it may not be seizure these things are more common in the elderly so what are the differential diagnosis which can be mistaken for the epilepsy or epilepsy can be mistaken for these things are like non epileptic events which are what we call as physiological space uh, spell where somebody with the uh, abnormal sensation or some lot of stress they just stare like this and don't behave properly so that they, they it can be mistaken as a seizure then syncope where there is a transient loss of uh, consciousness 
or somebody cups and falls down somebody goes for the passing the urine <coughs> and then he faints that we call as a micturition syncope so that is possible then there will be transient ischemic attack where for few seconds or few minutes there will be decreased blood supply to your brain and suddenly you will develop weakness so that is also can be mistaken then sometimes panic attacks can come like that sometimes sleep disorder also can be mistaken for the epilepsy so how will differentiate most important thing in elderly is whether it is syncope or whether it is seizure so when seizure can happen in any position usually in supine position sitting position lying down position when syncope is there it happens only in the standing position it happens with the when there is a significant stress is there or when somebody loses well so long on there or somebody cups seizures are rarely associated with nausea and sweating syncope is <coughs> more associated with the sweating and uh nausea aura that is a premonitory symptoms which are uncommonly or not seen in the syncope are commonly seen in the seizures in the seizures symptoms are usually unilateral that's why i was saying focal but in syncope they are usually bilateral then the person can become pale during a syncope he may develop cyanosis in the syncope loss of consciousness is brief in a syncope while it is more in the seizure then movements usually some brief jerks like this can happen in the syncope while seizure like the first video i show or i am going to show few videos these are the prolonged movements which happen tongue bite is rare in seizure uh, syncope more commonly seen in the seizure then the salivation is rare in the syncope more common in the seizure in addition eeg is mostly normal in syncope but it is abnormal in the seizure then i said previously also the confusion is more common in the seizure post ictally while it is uncommon during the syncope so as i said there can be provocative seizures like electrolyte disturbances hypoglycemia or sometimes medication or toxic especially somebody is taking regularly alcohol and suddenly stops alcohol he may develop seizures and other differentials which are very commonly seen these syncope tia tga there is transient global amnesia panic attacks which are can be seen commonly in the elderly so if you look at this video <coughs> so he was a 70 year gentleman who was referred me for a seizure or epilepsy but as you saw earlier he had just he sat from the sat in the bed he had a cough and then he falls down so what we call this is a cough syncope because of the coughing there is the uh, there is a syncope and because of which he develop a seizure and if you see immediately he regained the consciousness so this what we called as a cough syncope and in many times this can be mistaken for the seizure and then the patient takes long term treatment when you, if you look at this lady she is a 60, 70 year lady who came with the memory impairment and seizures her hand goes like this face becomes like this she kept the hand keeps hands like this <coughs> and recovers so these are very brief seizures what these are the focal seizures and she had something different thing what is completely reversible and may not require long term antiepileptic or anti seizure medication now this lady she has continuous as i said previously this right and hand and leg movement so many times this can be mistaken as a seizure or a non epileptic event but this she had because her blood sugar level was sky high they went above 500 and then she started having this movement so this is not a seizure but this is a seizure mimic so as i said earlier the clinical presentation can be like a memory impairment or memory issues so like a transient epileptic amnesia 
which usually happens after 55 years of age it is you can be repetitive last for minutes to hours and it is a pharmacosensitive form of major temporal lobe epilepsy and <coughs> why knowing about the seizures and epilepsy in elderly is important because there is a high recurrence of this about 25 to 50% in general population then the data in elderly is lacking and it is reasonable to start a seizure, uh, drug after the first clear seizure but before that we should do a proper diagnosis and why the management is important and difficult in elderly because if we look in the adult the therapeutic window is high while in elderly as the age increases it goes on decreasing because there will be pharmacokinetic variability like there will be change in the absorption rate of a drug then your liver function is going to go down your renal function or kidney function is going to go down so we have to take proper you have to choose the drug properly we have to choose the dose properly in addition that person will be on other medications for maybe his diabetes for his hypertension so that uh, all other uh, comorbidities we have to take into account before starting a treatment in elderly or senior citizen so that is the importance so there are a big list of the num drugs which we are going to use in the uh, epilepsy but for adults we use fairly three or four drugs with also caution because we don't want any interaction with the other medications we don't want interaction with the other drugs we want don't want to affect their liver function their kidney function and we don't want any side effect like dizziness or excessive sleepiness as well as cognitive decline because these uh, drugs can have this side effect so managing a person with epilepsy in a young age as compared to a senior citizen is a uh, difficult and a little bit challenging because we have to take care of other possibilities also so to conclude the high incidence of new onset epilepsy is going to have in elderly than any age group most common etiology is a stroke because as the age increases there will be stroke so one part of the brain is going to get a little bit affected and which is going to may cause seizures and there is a high risk of recurrence after initial seizures so that's why we if it is a clear cut seizure we will start the drugs and we have very few drugs as compared to the young population which we can use widely in the elderly population thank you thank you very much dr jakta thank you very much for a very detailed uh, presentation i must confess i there were some parts of the video which i couldn't watch it was just too uh, stark but i i guess it just revealed you know gave an indicator of what things are and uh, how serious uh, and real the problem is dr we have a few questions not too many of them but uh, a few of them yes uh, uh, the first one is a very basic one is there a permanent cure for this disease uh, okay so uh, there are various different uh, <clears throat> reasons for epilepsy as the age criteria there are some age related disorders but in elderly what we uh, think rather than cure now we want a control of the disease so if somebody has a epilepsy or seizures we start them on the drugs and we see for one and a half to two years and then we reduce and stop the drugs and cure if you ask me cure you if in elderly we don't have cure for the epilepsy but we have drugs for epilepsy so there are drugs for epilepsy uh, we have another question from uh, an anonymous attendee can there be a memory loss after seizure if yes, yes is it reversible yes there is a memory loss of the uh, after the seizure and what we can have uh, we can have that is a transient episodic loss of memory so during that period what happened you don't remember and then for a half to one hour we may have a confusion but after that we rem remember everything what was there before onset of seizure and after the seizure so it is a reversible is reversible that's uh, uh doctor we have another question which is do all essential tremors get converted in parkinsons i am on prolet 25 25 twice a day it has made my brain work slowly and foggy and is there is confusion is there any alternative do alternative therapies work 
yes uh, essential tremor all essential tremor does not convert into parkinson's disease some can be parkinson's disease can be mistaken for the essential tremor somebody who is having essential tremor means they have only tremors they don't have any slowness of activity or any other problem and usually uh, they require a treatment when it is going to affect your quality of life now you are uh, you say you are on prolet so prolet causes sedation causes clogginess also that is true we have other drugs but usually the people who had essential tremor their handwriting gets affected and they have difficulty in drinking water or a tea so we can have mugs with the two handles so you can drink with that so you have to do adaptations if you don't want to take a drug because in the essential tremor if you are going to take a drug then that uh, drug is going to act for definite period of time after that again you have to take the drug so it is not a cure so if those are uh, those tremors are not affecting your quality of life then you don't require tablet then beyond the prolet we have other tablets and if uh, their tremors are definitely uh, affecting you too much and you don't want to take uh, take the drugs then even newer therapies also like what we can uh, call as a deep brain stimulation where we place electrodes in the brain and control the tremor like a pacemaker which control your heart rate we control your tremors from the your putting a wire in your brain but again that comes with the implant so if somebody is younger 50 years affecting everything or somebody 60 years and who wants that get rid of the tremors then we can consider deep brain stimulation what we call as dbs right doctor you spoke about medication uh, medicines uh, we have a question from meeta bhav sir who yes. asks are there any side effects of uh, seizure medication yes there are a few side effects depending on the dose of the drug each drug has different side effects so the person uh, treat who is going to treat you they will mention you about the side effects mostly what happens with the initially at the start of the medicines you may get sometimes uh, dizziness then sleepiness but as uh, the uh, duration of treatment goes on like after one week you start uh, doesn't feel those side effects and those this go away few drugs will uh, change in your meditation also uh, change in your behavior or mood also so immediately you have to go back to your physician and you have to tell them so each drug has some different type of side effects but there is no such drug that which does not have side effect but usually it is dose related thank you doctor there was a slight technical uh, uh, hitch which was there but now it's all right uh, doctor we have a couple of questions from mr suresh vengankar yes uh, who asks if you have mental illness and symptoms of epilepsy who does one contacts a psychiatrist or a neurologist and uh, he asks another question is also can you specify the role of the psychiatrist and neurologist yes very good so uh, treatment of epilepsy is uh, predominantly done by the neurologist and if there are associated behavioral issues psychiatric issues are there they are going to manage by the psychiatrist so that's why i said initially also it is a team work then uh, now in india there are less number of psychiatrists uh, neurologists are available so many times psychiatrists also treating epilepsy so and <clears throat> one third of the patients with epilepsy they also have behavioral issues or psychiatric issues so that we have to recognize them and we have to address them appropriately like somebody for, with epilepsy they can have depression they can have anxiety especially women with epilepsy they have anxiety whether my child is going to have this disease whether uh, because of my medicines the baby is going to get affected or not then they may go in depression also so all these things go hand in hand nearly 30% patients may have behavioral issues or psychiatric issues during epilepsy so that's why i said epilepsy and comorbidities where we require a team work with the psychiatrist and depending on that we can modify the drug some drugs like levetiracetam which is a newer drug which causes behavioral issues so we call patients up to two or four weeks and ask them is there any effect of the drug is there is your mood has changed because some people tell that i have become so mad that i can't handle this drug then we change the drug 
other antiepileptic drugs like carbamazepine, sodium valproate, these are mood stabilizing drugs. So many times psychiatrists use these drugs not only for epilepsy, but for persons who are having mood disorder. Right. Thank you, doctor. Uh, is it helpful for a patient? Uh, Meeta Bhaktar asks. Is meditation helpful? Yes, definitely. Meditation is helpful not only for epilepsy, for uh, other things also to reduce the anxiety and improve your quality of life, improve your memory. So meditation is definitely helpful. Right. We have uh, Mr. Lakshmi Narayan from Bengaluru who asks, uh, the medicines given for an epileptic patient are sleep inducing and makes an individual dull. Uh, my cousin from being an active person has become dull. Is okay. there a you are Yeah, so I said it is very difficult. Uh, it is like very balancing act with, uh, in, when it comes to the elderly. So we have to change the dose of the drug. If it is the, we have to see how frequently the seizures are coming, how is the control of the epilepsy. You can uh, ask your treating physician or neurologist to reduce the dose or change the drug also. Because sometimes drugs can cause uh, sedation also. So, or you can, uh, if you are taking them on empty stomach, their levels will rise. So, take them after the, you take your lunch, your breakfast, or your dinner, and maximum dose you can take during the night. So, then uh, they don't, if you take in the morning, it may make you uh, sleepy or dizzy. So, you can reduce the dose as per the, uh, with your, uh, Consultation with the physician or neurologist. Right. Thank you. Um, doctor, we have a question from Mr. Santa Maria who says, ask what is the difference between clonic and tonic? Okay. So tonic is like this. We are, so you just, there is increase in the tone in your body and your hands become stiff. While chronic, as I showed that one of the video with the cups in copy, you are, there is a jerking like this. So there is a repeated jerking like this. So what we this call this as a clonic. Right. Uh, we have a few more questions. He, uh, who, who's with Meeta Bhav sir. Uh, well, uh, yeah. So she says, I'm getting seizure at night only in sleep. Why is it so? Excellent question. So what the people who have seizures in the night, what we call them as a nocturnal frontal lobe epilepsy, because some patients usually have seizures in the night and there is a synchronization during the sleep, there is activation of your intellectual discharges or what we call as abnormal synchronization in your brain and which cause them having a seizures. So the, it can be genetic cause or it can be related to some abnormality in the brain. So what we call it as a nocturnal frontal lobe epilepsy. So these people, most of the time, nearly more than 90% of the time, they are seizure in the sleep. Right. Uh, there's another question which is there is, <clears throat> does epilepsy have a direct relevance uh, with diabetes? No, epilepsy does not have any direct relevance with diabetes. The video which I showed, that person does not have epilepsy. But it was, it was thought that he uh, had a seizure. But that happened because there was increased sugar and there was some swelling in the brain. It disappeared once the sugars were controlled. Right. Uh, doctor, there's a question which is uh, uh, a little different, which is, would you would like to know if restless legs is related to disturbed sleep? What is your advice? Okay. Yes, restless legs, they cause disturbed sleep and the restless leg syndrome happens, especially those who have vitamin B12 deficiency, who have iron deficiency anemia, who has diabetes, okay, so and poorly controlled sugars. So all these things you need to rule out and rarely it can be idiopathic. So you need a, treat, a complete evaluation and treatment for restless leg syndrome. Doctor, the other question is... Uh, um, he, Mr. Lakshmi, again, uh, he says his brother also goes blank and falls on his head, facing the ceiling. Not sure if it is due to something else. No, the falls, as I said previously, falls are common in epilepsy, especially like frontal of epilepsy. We have common falls common in epilepsy, and you can have fall forward or fall backward also. 
so that uh, that doesn't differentiate it from a syncope so if the person has a salivation has a tongue bite has a, uh, a prolonged po postictal confusion prolonged loss of consciousness then it is a seizure when somebody has a, happens this happens in the standing position associated with the sweating then there is a uh, immediate recovery from that episode then it becomes a syncope right uh, one last question doctor is uh, uh, can we have your contact number and clin clinic address uh, mm -hmm. which we'll what we'll do is <clears throat> we'll put doctor's clinic address uh, with the takeaways every session of ours we archive it and we uh, edit this video and we'll put this video as well along with the takeaways and uh, that uh, can be there can we we'll carry your uh, details, but uh, just for your information, Dr. Jagtap is available um, at his own clinic in Pune, as well as the Dinanath Mangeshkar Hospital, which has the Bajaj Aliyah's uh, Center for Epilepsy. So he's available at both places and um, he can be reached uh, there. As far as the clinic address is concerned, do you, Dr. Dubu, can I just give it to you? Can we give it to our people right away so that uh, they don't have to wait? Yes, uh, it is the uh, 303 Mangal Murthy Complex, Hirabak Chok, Tilak Road. 303 Mangal Murthy Complex, Hirabak Chok, Tilak Road. Hiramath Chok, Tilak Road. Hirabak Chok, Tilak Road. Tilak Road, Pune. Yeah. Pune 1. Uh, uh, this is 411009. 411009. Uh, that's there. Doctor, there are a few more questions that have come in, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah. So, uh, uh, this is Meeta Bhavsar again, who uh, spoke about seizures of the night while sleeping. What should be done immediately at the time of seizure? Yeah, very good question. Actually, I forgot. Uh, like that, uh, we have a medazolam spray now available, which we have, it is a nasal spray. For the asthma, you we take uh, spray on the mouth in the mouth. For meda, uh, for epilepsy, we have medazolam spray, which have to put uh, uh, that uh, spray into our nose. One five puffs in the right nostril, five puffs in the uh, left nostril. So that will reduce or stop your seizure. Don't put your fingers or uh, anything towel or spoon into the mouth. Make that person to one side if he's a uh, uh, collar is tight or other tight uh, garment is using uh, using make it loose and if the froth or saliva is coming let it come down don't push or don't try to wipe it out the 90 percent seizure stop in one minute if any seizure lasts longer than five minutes you have to immediately rush that patient to the hospital but the as I said, 90% will stop in one minute and rest nearly uh, stop within two to three minutes. But during that period, each second looks like a minute. So we'd say that 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But that person goes into postural confusion, which may last for 15 to 20 minutes. So don't get panic. If somebody develops two seizures in 30 minutes, rush him to hospital. If somebody develops a seizure which lasts more than five minutes, rush him to the hospital. If you have spray available at home, then you can use that spray or just wait that seizure will go away. Don't be panicked. Don't put mouth. Don't keep give anything in his hand. Don't give him water or some people use their chappals or shoes and uh, make them to smell. Don't do like that. Don't do anything, any other heroic thing. Uh, doctor, which hospital can one take uh... A seizure patient to you know somebody who requires the hospitalization because as you said uh, there aren't too many hospitals which are into treating uh, uh, seizure and epilepsy patients no you have to take to nearest hospital because we are like i said minazolam spray that injectable drugs are available so you can take to nearby hospital for immediate treatment of a seizure right um, <clears throat> thank you uh, there is uh, one more question, which is, is a uh, uh, cervicogenic headache a neurological problem? I have a problem with C5 and C6, which is causing ache 
from the buccal cavity upwards and down in the shoulder. Okay, cervicogenic headache, a neurological problem. So, uh, yes, it is a neurological problem and the cervicogenic headache, again, uh, many times, many people feel that they have spondylitis or uh, they have uh, uh, any uh, different things. But if it is a headache, then it is a part of the migraine and predominantly it is related to the lifestyle. So, you have to do the lifestyle modification that is uh, will suffice. If it is very frequent, then it requires medication. Right. Thank you. And I think the last question you, which was there, you have already answered, is there a cure or one has to live with it? Uh, you have already answered that. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Jakta, for, uh, for being here. You know, in these last uh, 40 odd minutes, we've taken, we've answered quite a few questions. You've given a very detailed uh, presentation. This is the first time we've had uh, somebody speak about epilepsy and seizures. And, uh, 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 you know, it is, uh, while it was a great presentation, etc., it is a little worrying that we don't have really too many uh, medical units available across the country for this. And I hope uh, uh, this is reversed and it increases. Uh, before we go further, I have a couple of uh, small announcements to make. You know, as you know, we also conduct Seniors Have Talent, which has started, in it, it, it is in its group B. Those of you who want to uh, attend all our health webinars and do not uh, uh, want to miss it, there are times when we uh, when we announce these uh, health webinars a little late. Uh, so those of you who want to attend these webinars and do not want to miss out on an announcement, please uh, uh, register. We have a pre-registration link which you can fill in and we will uh, register you for every uh, every Saturday. As you know, uh, you can mark the time. We are always there on Saturday at 5 p.m. Uh, uh, for a session. I know it's a it's a tricky thing. As we can see, uh, Dr. Jagtap is at his clinic, and I'm sure there are patients uh, waiting for him. It's a Saturday evening. It's post-lockdown, uh, and, and so there are people who, who want to visit the doctors on a, on a, on a Saturday evening. So, uh, uh, But be that as it may, so those of you who would like to can um, you know the uh, the the, the pre-registration link for our health webinars has been put on the chat window. You can please register and attend that. That apart, uh, you know, last week we we announced uh, a calendar of various events that we that we have, and I'm going to ask the producer to do two things. One is to put up the calendar of the events for a second, and I will just go through them. Um, doctor, I, I must. Uh, also take your attention for this and you know you will also um, perhaps you could recommend to your senior citizen uh, patients etc contacts or what they are uh, dimple can you put them up can you put up that uh, creative so we have we have sessions every day monday through friday monday through saturday um, and, and and this is what it is so i'll just take you through this on monday there's a dance session by Feroz. <clears throat> now, this is all for 60 pluses only. We don't take even somebody who's uh, 59 and uh, 11 months. So, uh, this is a dance session by Feroz. There's a, in the evenings on Mondays, uh, alternate evenings, we have a housey and little known stories by Mohan Krishnan. On Tuesdays, there's an open house by KV Lakshmi Narayan. Mr. Lakshmi Narayan just asked a question right now. He's in Bengaluru. Um, Wednesdays, uh, there's Zumba by Rani Nambiar, and in the evenings, the seniors have talent, which has which has gone through its ninth season, which is it right now in its ninth season, and we have had over a thousand participants uh, in in that, and they are all uh, very good. A lot of people are there. In fact, many other people who are there who are conducting sessions here are all uh, uh, senior citizens. So, uh, Nilofa Amnani, we can. Uh, uh, what we'll also do is I'll ask her producer to put the WhatsApp group uh, 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 link on the chat and you can just enter that and be part of the WhatsApp group, which is the events uh, WhatsApp group and you will get alerted. So on Thursdays is Antakshi with Usha Jacob and uh, uh, karaoke singing by Gigi Sharma. Both of these people were uh, seniors have talent participants. And uh, then we have Anita Rakshat who's doing on Fridays meditation uh, and yoga. 
And on alternate evenings, there's poetry and prose by Sajni Vedya. Then there is on Saturday mornings uh, acting classes by Mohan Krishnan, and in evenings is it is the health webinar. So, but for a few other few people over here, all the sessions are conducted by former seniors have talent participants. So, uh, uh, you know that's a big community out there which is there. I'm going to take one more minute of yours, Doctor. I'm going to uh, request the producer to have uh, to show the video for the last for the November issue that has just been published on the 16th or the 15th of November, the latest issue of uh, Seniors Today uh, is, is there and you can watch the video right now and get the highlights. Ah. So I don't think the music is there, so I'll just take you through it. Um, the, the cover story is on Prithvi Raj Kapoor uh, and uh, that has been written by the award-winning journalist Deepa Gelot and the legend lives on. Um, then there's an interesting article by Mr. Vikram Sethi on uh, My Heart Goes Garden Garden. And uh, there's Elementary, there's, a, there's an article on sleep, which is uh, by Dr. Nandini Saini. And um, there's an article about publishing yourself, vanity publishing, by Mr. R. V. Rajan. Uh, you can become a publisher yourself of books. And these are some tips by him. Uh, there's a travel article by Dinaz Wadia on Sikkim. Uh, so that's it. It's it's free of cost uh, on Seniors Today, seniorstoday.in. You can go and uh, read the magazine. You can also read the last uh, 40 issues of the magazine. We started publishing in July 2019, pre-pandemic, and we have been publishing every month on the 15th of every month. I know I look like I'm doing a sales pitch, but one has been doing that over, over and over again, and uh, one is so... Uh, one, one so enjoys uh, this entire thing. So this is what we do, uh, Dr. Jagtap, for uh, seniors, uh, seniors today. We publish a magazine every month. We have a website which is there, uh, which is updated uh, uh, daily, Monday through Saturday. And we also do these various programs every day. And um, the health webinar is what we started first in June uh, 2019. And uh, we've had... Uh, over 125 doctors from across the country and uh, 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 who have been there. And uh, these have been running for two and a half years. So that's what we do. And uh, 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 we will be back next week on uh, Saturday, the 26th. We have uh, Dr. Patnaik, who's been there with us in the past, uh, who's going to be talking about kidney stones. Uh, 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 so that's the session which is there on uh, next Saturday, the 26th at 5 p.m. And before that, I would like to thank Dr. Sujit Jaktab for, uh, for being here, for being here at, 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 uh, at, at the last minute. And thanks to uh, uh, Namita Shabad for having facilitated this. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Jaktab, for being here and for an excellent session. It is, it is of course, you know, the, the, the questions that came in, the, that came in also show that uh, the, the, the level of awareness uh, you know, is is also very low. So I'm glad we did this. And uh, and I wonder why we didn't do it earlier. We should have done it much earlier because this is concerning a lot of senior citizens. It's yes. not that you know uh, people may have been absolutely normal for their uh, you know first uh, 50, 60, 70 years, and they could suddenly develop seizures. So uh, it's an important topic to consider. And I'm glad that uh, the medical fraternity does observe a World Epilepsy Day uh, on November 17th. And I'm, I'm really glad that I noticed it and we invited you for it. Thank you very much once again. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for invitation. Thank you. Yeah. Good day.